Welcome listeners to another exciting episode of the Do Big Podcast. I'm your host Sheetal Choksi and today we have a truly special guest joining us. We're going to delve deep into the world of generative AI and its transformative impact on micro, small and medium enterprises. Our expert guest today is Hitesh Motwani and he is here to unravel the incredible possibilities and share invaluable insights as we come to the close of a year where generative AI became a buzzword everywhere. All of us suddenly knew everything about generative AI from nothing. Um, will 2024 see a continued enthusiasm around generative AI, or will we see it move from just a buzzword to making a significant difference of business? So buckle up for an enlightening journey into the realm of generative AI tailored for MSMEs, because the future is now, and it is algorithmically fascinating. Before I get on this journey, let me share a little more about our guest today. Hitesh Motwani is a generative AI, chat GPT, digital transformation and digital marketing trainer. He teaches at various IIMs and at the University of London as visiting faculty. He has trained 200,000 people in more than 400 companies across 100 plus countries. Today, he is also helping companies with GA4. For those of you who think I have just said jargon, that's Google Analytics for migration as well. He specializes in training professionals at large and medium scale organizations. He trains everyone from CXOs to marketing heads and to individuals like me. So he does this across board. He's an avid blogger and has written many, many blogs for, you know, things like digital insights, read if gadget stories and I think it's fascinating to read his blogs. You should catch up on those. His specialities are social media marketing, AI tools, digital media training, and so much more. Uh, if I actually went on to give you all of the details about Hitesh, I think I'd take the entire episode just talking about him. So I'm not going to do that. And I'm just going to quickly welcome Hitesh. And with Hitesh, it's an absolute pleasure having you on the Doobie Podcast. Thank you so much, Ethan. It's really a pleasure to also have you over here, and uh, you know, very excited to be over here. To be very, to be very honest, <laughs> right? So let's get started. <laughs> Done. So I just talked about the fact that you know, generative AI in 2023, it almost seemed like everyone was talking about it, and ChatGPT, I think, was the one which kind of became the tipping point for it. Right? Everybody suddenly. From generative AI, I don't know what it is going to do, whether it is going to impact our lives, etc. Suddenly, everyone was using one part of generative AI, you know, chat GPT. And um, I think it has caught the attention of from everyone, from the layman to industries to tech enthusiasts, everyone. When we move into 2024, do you think that the narrative around generative AI will evolve? Do you think we'll see deeper integrations? Do you see it, think we will see far more practical implementations? Because right now, it seems to be only in the space of creative, right? It's about writing and visuals and things like that. But Gen AI has so much more. So where do you see this headed in 2024? So, you know, very interesting question. But let me just probably start, let me just start a step back. And then let me answer your question because I think you know, either people are listening to us will also understand what generative AI is all about before we actually dive into that question, <laughs> right? So just for everybody to understand this AI industry, typically AI is today divided into two parts. One is what we call as traditional AI and some people call it generative AI or some people also call it discriminative AI and generative AI. Let's put it that way. Discriminative AI and generative AI, right? So you see, traditionally, the AI systems that they're built across, uh, they were only meant to classify, which simply means that, uh, suppose if I give you an image of a dog or a cat, and I ask the machine to tell me what is a dog or a cat, it'll say it's a dog or a cat, as simple as that. So they were only able to discriminate between objects. But what happened in the last couple of years, in fact, 20 years ago, generative AI is not a new concept. It's always been there. I think it's just become a buzzword in the last one year. So to give you a very simple example, you know, uh, you must have heard about Google Translate. We can translate your, you know, your uh, content on English to Hindi, Hindi to Marathi, Gujarati. That's a prime example of how generative AI does, right? But why does it cut on fire? Because earlier generative AI was not that smart. Like when you ask it to speak or talk, 
you know, uh, it wasn't able to generate very, very fancy stuff the way it's able to do today. And yes, thanks to Chat GPT, today everybody is going crazy and gaga about what generative AI is. Generative AI, people always assume that it's only in the marketing arena or only in the creative arena. But to be very honest, generative AI has impact in everybody's life. Whether you're an HR, whether you're an admin, whether you're an accountant, whether basically you're a creative person, salesperson, whether even you are actually a CEO of a company, generative AI today is impacting each one of us. To give you an example, in the creative realm, we obviously speak about it a lot more because there are a lot of use cases out there. I can create videos, I can create images, I can create text. But having said that, suppose I'm an HR head of a company. I want to build an HR, entire HR policy for myself. Well, today, with generative AI, I can do that. I can build an entire HR policy. Or let's take a financial analyst. I want to probably just understand what is the recommendation of the entire market on buy and sell on stocks or different broking houses. Today, I have to go manually to every website, look at it, you know, like individually. But I can simply go to Bing, ask it that, you know, I'm looking for this particular stock. I would want to like, you know, look at all the broking houses. Can you just tell me in a table, what are people saying, buy or sell? It reduces my research time by almost half. So to be very honest, it's not just about the creative industry. I think it's about how do you use Gen AI. It's not about the tool. It's about how do you actually use it. That's what really matters. And uh, so while it ha- is impacting all of us, right? And there is a certain uh, adoption of Gen AI which is happening across industries. But where do you foresee SMEs integrating Gen AI into their day-to-day operations? Okay, so let's break down into what are the tasks usually SME does, okay? okay. So typically, in any, if, I'm, if I'm an SME, today I'm doing one of four things. Number one, I'm doing operations. Operation means I'm using documentation, contracts, you know, letters, emails. So today, generative I can seamlessly, seamlessly integrate into all of these realms. And you can actually automate half your tasks which you really spend time on using these tools. Second thing, what, I, what an SME does, he does a lot of marketing because I have to market the products Right. And earlier I had to hire an agency, I had to hire a copywriter, I had to probably had somebody else to do it for me. Today, generative AI can do most of these things with just one just one line. So let's say for example, I want to build a web page. Or you know, I want to basically, you know, uh, write a script uh, for my social media. I want to shoot a reel, let's say for example. Or I, or I have video, I want to edit the video. Okay. I can actually use generative AI for all these things. Third is sales. Let's take for example now, uh, I want to really improve the productivity of my team or myself on selling skills. I want to probably have a better email script to reach out to everybody. I want to like, you know, maybe better get a better cold call script to kind of call up my prospective customers. I can even do that as well. And not only that, I can also basically build an entire objection handling playbook. So let's take for example that I a lot of customers tell me I don't have time, I'm not the right decision maker. And sometimes, you know, I don't know what to answer as an SME. I can even do that as well. And fourth is for advisory tasks. Let's take for example that I want to brainstorm. I want to I want an advisory. I want to brainstorm an event. I want to do you know any of these tasks which is there. Even those can be done with generative AI. So typically you can actually use it for whatever task you want as an SME. You know, it is just about you putting your head together and knowing you know which tool is to be used for what purpose and actually get out there and get things done. So what I'm hearing, Hitesh, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that a lot of communications related tasks. Right, whether it is emails, whether it is internal comms, etc., that can easily be tackled by integrating AI, a generative Absolutely. AI into the system. But as MSMEs have much more, right? So, do you see, for example, production is something that MSMEs do? Do you see generative AI coming into their day-to-day operations when it comes to manufacturing, when it comes to production, when it comes to I don't know supply chain? Those aspects of the business, do you see a role for generative AI there? Okay. So, good question. So, let me just probably break it down. See, you know, obviously, you cannot do manufacturing using AI. I mean, yeah, AI can do that, but generative AI can't do that. Because generative AI is more about generating the output, right? But I'll probably give you some, some use cases on these three aspects. Okay. Let's take manufacturing first. Now, in manufacturing, sometimes I want to improve my process. I want to improve, you know, my efficiency. And I'm facing the bottlenecks. Maybe the bottleneck is with my labor. The bottleneck is with technology. The bottleneck is with IoT technology available today. I can seek guidance with the generative AI tool. Okay. 
So, you know, it can act like a CEO or an advisor for you, number one. Let's talk about production, you know. So, let's take, for example, that there's season time and I'm facing a lot of production issues in the sense that, you know, uh, I'm, I, either I'm under, underproducing or overproducing. If I'm underproducing, my capacity is not fulfilled. Suppose I want to, like, you know, get some advice on how do I actually uh, increase, increase the capacity or let's take, you know, if I'm overutilized, then, you know, how do I kind of uh, fulfill the market demand by, you know, getting some advice on how do I probably reach out to other manufacturers or other producers out there in the market. So it can be used as an, as an advisor for you and even to help you improve the process, process improvements, you know, understand the latest, latest technology in the market right now, etc., etc., etc. So recently, you know, really recently, I, in fact, happened to train a supply chain company. Many people might not know this, but if you want to actually get the entire route map, let's take if I am shipping a products to Singapore or shipping products to Dubai or some other places. Now, I really want to do route optimization of the supply chain or probably understand that you know, how can I make the supply chain more efficient to get these goods in a specified amount of time. Even generative AI is capable to do that. And among all of these things, if I get a lot of data from this, let's, let's say I get some reports, some analytics, I can even do predictive descriptive analytics using AI tools today. So it's not just limited to, you know, creative writing or thinking. It's also basically about how to, suppose if I'm not a data scientist, or, you know, maybe I'm a SME, MSME, I, you know, I don't have enough funds to even get a data team to me to analyze the data. But if I have a raw Excel sheet with me, I can simply upload the Excel sheet onto a Gen AI tool and ask it to give me insights, suggestions, you know, what are the trends in the market, which is the best time for me, etc., etc., etc. All of those insights can be done today with the generative AI. So that's very interesting uh, because very often what happens is when new technology comes in like AI, right? We talk about uh, AI implementation and then everybody starts putting the cost, right? So a data scientist costs so much, this one costs so much and all of that is required when you're implementing AI in your organization. At this point in time, it almost seems like only the large organizations can afford it because it's very expensive to do that. What trends do you anticipate in terms of affordability and accessibility of Gen AI tools and platforms in 2024? Will it be significantly different from today? Because we've also learned this with technology. Over a period of time, it starts to become uh, cheaper. But currently, it seems to be fairly you know, uh, expensive. So where do you see this? And do you see this as quickly as 2024 or a little further down? So to be very honest, Generative AI technology is almost free today. <laughs> At least from an application perspective, not build building perspective. Right? So there's no cost implication. And, and even if cost is there, it's not large cost. It's, it's not like unaffordable. Right? Today, any Gen AI tool will not be costing you at the tops beyond 5K per month. Okay. Okay? Which is like pretty affordable. But what is the gap today is that people are not aware on which tool to use for what purpose. And that is where the entire market today needs an awareness in this space, as we see. With regards to which of the areas generative AI will actually disrupt, I think it will be almost every business. You know, know, who will survive this storm? So I'll give an example to you. Assume that, you know, I am a manufacturer, right? And I want to essentially, you know, improve, improve my process efficiency. Now, while I can do that, I can simply ask him for advice, help me to improve my efficiency and XYZ process, right? But I should be understanding and using the right terminologies. For example, I want to say, I want to implement the Kanban system into my, you know, system, you know, into my process manufacturing. How can I do that? I want to basically build a Gantt chart my process A takes one week, process two takes three weeks, process three takes four weeks, in process two, process one, there's an overlap of one week, right? I should be able to understand and use the terminologies which are required to build that plan or to build that, you know, uh, systems in place. So, it's not just, not just about the tools, it's about having, the, having sufficient knowledge of the subject matter expertise to instruct and guide the tool to help me to take it to a direction. Now, who's going to get affected? Number one, consultants. Because today, Generative AI has possibly read every single book in this planet. It probably has more knowledge than you and me at this point in time. Correct. Right. Number two, you know, it is essentially, I would say to some extent, data scientists. You know, because a lot of the, a lot of at least only analytical job, but not the scientists, but you can see a lot of analytical job, will also, which also get affected to a large extent. 
any writing job you know earlier i had to hire writers to write questions for me write answers for me write you know blogs for articles for me already most of these things have already seen disruption right now people have stopped outsourcing work to writers anymore so then even even for the better song writers so you know like i was exploring a tour yesterday and uh, i was able to write a rap song totally i was able to write a rap song i was able to actually also you know build an entire uh, song with lyrics with you know with vocals which is as good as taylor swift right so technically everybody in this world is going to be get affected but who will survive is who knows how to use this tool so you're you you you're not competing against an ai tool you're competing against people who know ai tools better than you you know so 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 you have to worry about the tools part you have to worry about the people who can really multiply the efficiency right now so today if i was taking 8 hours to do one job today the time is reduced to 1 hour to so 1 and a half hour right now using ai tools right so we see the teams are going to be more agile they're going to be more faster and they basically are going to like you know be able to do more with less time so that's where i see this see that that transition happening in the 2024 right as as we speak right now so that's very fascinating because what you're really saying is that the challenge msmes are going to face is finding the people who can help them speak to the tools better uh, rather than really worry about it absolutely correct correct so i'm just trying to understand that there's not too many people who can speak to the tools better right we're hearing new jobs coming up like query engineers and all that but what is your advice to msmes to say if you're embarking on this journey right and if so they know their business they know where the gaps are in their business they understand that a process is less efficient than say b process right instinctively um i think entrepreneurs just know where the glitches are in their own systems and they always work towards fixing those glitches how should they therefore identify the right partners to do something like this for them somebody who can work with them and become the intermediary between their questions and the questions for the it teams so there are two ways to do this right now one way i would recommend to msme is at least they should get upskilled in this arena because when they are upskilled because they know the business better nobody knows the business better than an msme right because he's on the ground he's speaking to people he's speaking to clients he exactly knows the pulse of the market So the way he or she will be able to use this technology to actually define their progress in the next coming years, number one. But having said that, obviously, if they are too bogged down with their operational tasks and manufacturing tasks, then it is better to kind of find somebody who can support them with it. Second best support is their own one of the employees in their current circle or one of the youngsters whom they know, maybe their son, maybe their daughter, maybe somebody in the close circle who actually is using this tool far better for other purposes. and maybe they can assist them on how to talk to these tools for their business and number 3 you go out there and find some consultants on board you find some people on board i wouldn't recommend to find companies with companies who charge them a bomb and right? maybe some freelancers maybe what we call as prompt engineers in the market typically right so there are people who are specialized in prompting right now you know to find them and explain them the business they can get into the business gyan and prompt engineers will probably like understand how to talk to the bot to help them with their business problems right and help them bridge this gap eventually but having said that whatever activities they conduct right today even the partners the agencies the internal teams today will actually be eventually using this jni tools directly or indirectly to do the task in future and that's where we are seeing this we see this entire gamut of you know the next wave of people who are going to be you know asking questions more than actually producing the answers in the next one year so that's that's quite fascinating because i remember when first you know a couple of years ago and till maybe two years ago everybody was talking about data is the new oil and every company was working towards setting data up and data scientists got you know hired and all of that but one of the big challenges was that business doesn't understand the language of technology and data scientists wouldn't understand the language of business right and therefore there was despite the fact that you had the best data scientists in your system you struggled because you went and asked him a question he gave you an answer but that wasn't the answer that was going to provide the solution because they haven't understood the business is that going to continue to Absolutely. be a challenge in the coming years or do you think over a period of time people are getting trained and learning to multitask so today prompt engineers or query engineers or whatever you call them 
are they going to be in a position to speak the language of business as much as they speak the language of the team? See, this problem is inherited in whatever partner that you work with, to be very honest. Whether I'm getting a sales person on board, whether I'm getting a marketing person on board, whether I'm getting HR on board for that matter, or whether I'm getting prompt engineer on board. This is not a new problem that MSMEs haven't encountered before. But luckily, you know, today, because we are living in the technology world, it is not, it's not even difficult for anybody to get upskilled and understand the business process. So let's take, even if I'm a prompt engineer, even if I don't understand something, I can probably ask the AI tool itself to make me understand the process in a five-year-old tone. And it, is, it does a very good job. Like to, like, to be very honest, you know, today when I'm conducting my trainings in multiple organizations, I also don't understand half the businesses. But, and also companies do not have enough time to kind of, you know, help, help me understand their business cycle as well. But I get all my knowledge today. I've stopped doing Google search for a couple of times. And I'm getting most of my knowledge using AI tools right now. Because they're able to explain to me better. It's everything in the one place. I don't have to like visit 20, 30 websites. I think that should be a challenge going forward. If the problem is very, very smart, they'll be able to figure out the business eventually. And also, you know, MSME will also probably get upskilled. And even they know their business at the back of their head. So they will, they will be able to give insights that normally a Google can't give or maybe a AI tool can't give. So that's where the that's where you start making a differentiation in your business at the end of the day, right? So that's where I see things going right now. Do you foresee an increase in the automation of workflows within MSMEs? And how do you think this is likely to impact overall efficiency and production? Absolutely. I mean, you know, there'll be automation throughout, in fact. It's already happening. You know, so most of the tasks that we do, like, you know, I come from a creative background. So let's take for example, earlier I should probably take one full day to edit one video. Today I can do it in half an hour using an AI tool, right? Same thing with an MSME. Today, suppose he's licensing with banks, he's licensing with multiple partners, right? All he has to do today is build a template and keep it handy on his phone and go to the AI tool and put it, I want to send a letter to the bank, I want to get an LOC, I want to get his proposal. He can automate his proposals, automate his drafts, automate his communication, automate his contracts, uh, legal contracts, MOUs, whatever you call it, right? So there's going to be an immense amount of automation we're going to see. It's already happening right now. It's, it's continuing to happen as and when the awareness level goes up. Okay. And what trends um, and developments do you anticipate in Gen AI space? And how will they shape the business landscape in 2024? So one thing about generative AI is very uncertain. It also is extremely, extremely fast. So let's take, for example, the tool that I was using three months back, we're going to bring it outdated about, you know, some time. Why? Because somebody else will come with a better version of it and a free version of it, most importantly. So at time, what happens is it becomes very overwhelming for somebody to keep a track of so many things. And also there's no one solution for it. There are multiple tools for multiple purposes. To, to give you an example, today, assume that I want to do data crunching. I can use a chat GPT speed version, which was the only tool available in the market six months back. Then a company called Chat to the Data came in. They started giving it for free. And they do the same job what ChatGPT does, the paid version does. So now you can upload your Excel data and you can build, you know, visualizations for you, you can build data analysis for you, you can build a pivot table for you, you can do whatever you want. Then there are specialized companies who only specialize in one or two tasks, which is, say, for example, only building a dashboard. For example, then Power BI also got a dashboard where today I don't even have to like drag and drop and make a chart. I can just say, I want this chart to make that chart for right. me. So the problem with the Gen AI, Gen AI today is that it is evolving at a rapid pace and at a pace that nobody can even imagine right now. So to keep up with it is also a challenge. So though I'm a trainer, you know, I train so many companies, even for me, it's difficult to keep up. Imagine somebody who's not even in this industry and is not even like, you know, into it. For, for him or her, how difficult would it be to catch up with these technologies at very fast pace? And also there's a there's an awareness issue. So today, let's say we think yesterday I was speaking to a developer friend of mine and he's a Java developer. So now I was just chatting with him and I'm asking him that, you know, can you essentially, uh, did you know that you can, you can code using you can code using AI? That that's one of the widely used use cases in the market. But he being in the industry for five years, even he wasn't aware that we can actually code in Java using an AI tool today. You know, it, it is about, number one, being aware. Number two, applying it. And number three, getting insights from it. If somebody is able to complete these life cycles, they will be able to like, become a disruptor force in the market and maybe their go-to-market strategy or maybe their time-to-market can increase by a significant level as we speak right now. So, the first step is being aware, right? 
and what is your advice yeah. to msmes as to how do they build their own knowledge how do they build their own awareness around generative ai what are the sources resources uh, which they can kind of get to and understand what generative ai is all about so what simple sources just keep on seeing instagram reels and tiktok <laughs> right that's the best source right because everybody is spending time over there so there are a lot of channels there's a channel called ai surfer for example you know where it keeps on updating every new t- technology around ai there's a, there's a channel called overpowered by tanmay bhat which is a great fantastic resource you know wherein they keep on discussing they keep on having this podcast on what's happening what's new how the industry is disrupted and they also follow me as well but the thing is that uh, you know you just need to probably just see one of these content and then what happens is the ai algorithms kick in and they'll keep on showing similar content to you that's one of the easiest way but more than just watching it what i would recommend is just take your phone and just start using very basic tool like chat gpt first moment start using it first then you should, and you start understanding the power of this tool you will start exploring things on your own but once you know how one tool works you'll be able to understand how other tools work automatically yeah so you know just about getting started from one of these places and then start using one of these technologies and then you start like you know using the the rest is like a domino and it just keeps on happening automatically any any words of caution for msmes when it comes to using generative ai so one thing is you should be mindful of what data you are sharing uh with the platform because tomorrow you know it should be the case you are sharing the very confidential data of an organization which is not supposed to be shared now having said that it is it is not that uh, something can happen to you to be very honest right your data will not get leaked out somewhere but currently these tools are free of cost so obviously they will be using your data to train themselves or sometimes the data data if there data breach happen then you know it can actually become a detrimental issue for you and you and you, you don't want to rub off not very well with your partners or with your clients in that scenario so you should be mindful of what you're sharing with these platforms number one number two you know you should also basically not use it for any unethical purposes so if for example don't ask you any question which are not great not actually uh, you know building something which is not required and most importantly use it as a as a companion you may be as a virtual assistant that you have and start looking at and start thinking when you start doing a daily activity start thinking that what can i automate where am i spending more much of time you know is it something that something that i can actually like you know use an ai for when you do a daily operation you start thinking you know like what do you want to automate start with that question first you try to automate as much as you can okay because that's where you start freeing up your time and you can focus as an msp you can focus more on the strategic aspect of it more on the bigger problems than worrying about these smaller mundane issues and mundane tasks at the end of the day um that's fascinating i just want to understand that if our listeners that and there's quite a few of our listeners who are definitely looking at harnessing the power of ai Uh, and the power of generative ai specifically in their enterprises um i'm just wondering are there any final thoughts or you know kind of a checklist of things that you would put together for them to say what's the advice you would give them on how best to harness generative ai in their enterprises okay so so, so i'll probably give you a playbook you know that you can actually use so first things first you know you should take a piece of paper and divide your task that you do into three buckets the first bucket is called a strategic task strategic task is what a strategic task is about building company policies brand plans you know production plan all of those things something that requires a strategic thought strategic mindset at the end of the day right as an msme and you actually want to start bucketing those tasks down and you you want to write down okay like which of these tasks actually can then be automated that's the one number 2 the second task you should, you should basically keep a list of is what we call is operations operation means like you know your mundane tasks proposals emails letters contracts social media marketing you know all of these things which you do on a daily basis and today most of these again can be automated because you know you, you don't have to really put your head together on how it should be done and the best thing is just to just to people to get aware of this even further people always feel that this tool this tool can speak in english but not really you can speak in any language you want it can also write in tamil telugu hindi malayalam as well by the way a uh, regional language works better right you can even get them to write in regional languages as well and you can also ask ai to speak write and build a video regional language too by the way and the third is efficiency boosters for example you wrote something you want to just do a quick grammar check you want to build an faq list 
say for example build a entire uh, first level responses for your for your audiences right so you can do all of these tasks which will actually help you boost efficiency uh, but they're still significant but not but time consuming can also be automated and third is start looking at start thinking about four aspects one is written so writing what can i automate second is visual images content graphics brochures sales letters if you want some images how can you automate that number 3 is audio visual you know in terms of your videos how can you kind of do that as well then number 4 is basically something which requires technical expertise for example websites bug fixing app development software development today again most of these tasks can be done by an ai tool there's always an ai there's always an ai tool for every of these tasks right now so if you start just putting this small list together and then maybe speak to somebody in this industry that arena who knows generative ai better or even just probably google search and figure out you know how can i automate these tasks you find most of your answers in this and that will actually help you out too and uh, get more time for yourself that's amazing on that note uh, i think i'm going to end this episode because this has been really really helpful i'm sure that each one of the msmes are now going to use that toolkit of yours which is break it down into three buckets and then break it down into four aspects of it and that's going to be phenomenal for them as a start point to be able to say hey listen what can i automate and what can i use generative ai for to take away the burden which is you know boring everyday repetitive tasks so i think that that really is very helpful uh, for you to have shared um thank you so much and it is an absolute pleasure it has been an absolute pleasure having you on this episode of the dubey podcast thank you so much for your time thank you so much sita thank you for tuning in to the dubey podcast a podcast that is dedicated to providing insights strategies and success stories of smart digital solutions for smes we believe that behind every successful business there's a strong foundation of reliable and secure technology be a digital connectivity cloud infra cloud apps collaboration tools or cybersecurity solutions in a rapidly evolving digital world where technology is key to progress tata tele business services stands at the forefront of digital transformation of smes tata tele business services with their extensive experience and commitment to empowering businesses understands the unique needs of smes Tata Tele Business Services with their extensive experience and commitment to empowering businesses understands the unique needs of SMEs. Whether it's scalable connectivity, robust communication tools or tailored ICT solutions, Tata Tele Business Services is here to propel your business forward. Tata Tele Business Services is synonymous with innovation, reliability and transformative solutions. With a legacy spanning decades, Tata Tele Business Services has been empowering businesses and transforming lives across the nation. So, if you're ready to take your organization to new heights of success, we encourage you to explore the transformative possibilities that Tata Tele Business Services has to offer. Our contact details are in the description below. Remember, we're available on major podcast platforms. So, if you enjoyed today's conversation, subscribe to our podcast for future episodes which we promise will be packed with equally valuable insights on questions entrepreneurs face as they digitize and scale businesses with the help of technology don't forget to rate and review our podcast as well as share it with peers colleagues and other entrepreneurs like yourself who will benefit from listening to it thank you for listening to us and until the next time keep embracing technology and may your business thrive in the digital era